Hey guys, Nick here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to jump into DaVinci Resolve and kind of create like a 3D photo cube. And this was honestly like not something that came to my attention, but a comment to ask on the most recent video I dropped, which is how to create like a nice fancy sort of photo overlay in your video. So that can be linked up above if you want to check that video out. But he asked if you could do this with a 3D cube. And I was like, yeah, of course you can. So let's jump in and yeah, just show you how to add different images to a cube in DaVinci Resolve and then render it out. If this is the sort of content that you guys enjoy, I will ask for a sec for you to subscribe to the channel down below. Doesn't cost anything. And yeah, you get to see some sick tutorials coming in the future as well as other videos. So yeah, subscribe down below. But yeah, without any further ado, let's jump into the tutorial. All right, guys, so here we are inside of DaVinci Resolve. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is import the photos that we wanna put on the photo cube. Makes sense. So we're gonna open Finder and just drag the images in. Now, I guess one thing to note is obviously we're messing around with 3D here and adding high resolution photos to a 3D object inside of Fusion can um, obviously slug down your computer. So, you know, keep in mind that when you add the photos to the project, if you can somehow get lower quality ones or something like that, will definitely smooth things up. Now we're gonna go new Fusion composition and 24 frames a second, five seconds, that'll be fine for this one. You will know if you need longer. So I'm gonna drag that down into the timeline and with the playhead over it, gonna jump over to Fusion. Now what we need to do here is set up our 3D scene, which requires a few different nodes. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add our cube. So type in cube to our tool selector. And then from there, we're gonna add our renderer, renderer 3D, and we're gonna connect the renderer 3D to the media out node. And there we are. Now, what basically what the render 3D node does, if you're not familiar, is translates everything in the 3D scene into a 2D image, which then the media out node can, I guess, interpret, and then you get your final image here in the edit tab. So, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start merging some things into the scene. So, there's a few things we need in a 3D scene to get a good image. We need a camera, which is what we're gonna look through to render the image out and we need some lighting. So we're gonna do that now. We're gonna add a camera and it's gonna be the 3D camera. So we're gonna add that and drag the output of that to the output of the cube. It'll create our merge 3D node. Now, just quickly, the merge 3D node works the same as a 2D merge node, except that it can have as many inputs as you want. So it's just gonna keep adding and adding and adding and adding because a 2D merge node has a foreground and background. But in 3D space, you know, that is totally relative to the scene. So you can just keep adding and adding and adding. And what we're gonna do now is just add an ambient light to the scene. And an ambient light basically is just gonna light the whole scene uniformly. What we're gonna do now is play around with the scene. So to do that, we're gonna drag the merge 3D node and we're gonna put it into our second viewer here. And that gives us an idea of how the scene is looking. So based off of what object we select, whether that's the camera, which is gonna select the camera, the cube, it'll select the cube, we're going to be able to control the objects. I guess I'll talk about how you move around in 3D space. I'm using a magic mouse and I'm obviously on a Mac, so I'm just gonna talk about how that works. So holding down the command key and then swiping up and down on the scroll wheel is going to allow me to zoom. If I add the shift command modifier to that, it's going to allow me to rotate. And if I don't have anything selected, I'm just using the mouse, then it allows me to pan around like so. It takes a while to get used to navigating 3D space. So don't think that it's easy straight off the bat. Um, but yeah, so that's the 3D scene. Now in a 3D scene, we're able to move and rotate objects. That's what this little gizmo is here. Each color represents a different axis. So we've got our Y and X, and then I'm assuming blue would be our depth or our Z axis, which is, is some 3D softwares use different ways of doing that. And then if we go up here to the top left, we can turn it to rotate and we get a similar gizmo with the same colors um, and you can just like rotate. So, so what we're gonna do, as you can see our render object, our rendered image here, which is our media out, we can't see anything. And that's if we select the camera, you can see the camera is currently smack bang in the middle of the cube. So we can drag the camera out a little bit. You can see now we can start to see things. And the ambient light, uh, because it lights the scene uniformly, it doesn't really matter where in the scene it goes because it just lights the scene. So we're gonna move that over to the side and I'm just gonna rotate the cube. You don't have to, I'm just gonna rotate it just a little bit on the diagonal so that we can kinda see what's gonna happen when we add images to it. Now, one last thing we need to do 
is with lighting, we need to make sure that everything is affected by the light. By default, it can just be completely turned off. So if we select the Merge 3D node, you'll notice that up in our inspector it has pass through lights disabled. That means all lights plug into it don't affect the image. So we're gonna turn that on. We've gotta to go to the renderer, and now you can see if with the renderer 3D, we have lighting as well. We're gonna enable lighting and shadows. Straight away, we get a bit of a change in the scene, which is what we want. Now we can obviously brighten this up by increasing the intensity of our ambient light. So I'm just texting, you know, grabbing the ambient light and adjusting the intensity. You can see it's quite flat and that's because an ambient light doesn't produce any shadows. So what we're gonna do now is add another light to the scene. So we're gonna go shift space. I'm gonna type in spotlight. We're just gonna connect that to the original merge. And you can see it's currently in the cube. So we're gonna move it out of the cube. And you can see we get our visual representation there. So I'm just gonna move it off to the side a little bit and rotate it a little bit like so. I'm gonna make the cone a little bit larger, play around with the drop off, but this is all completely up to you guys. Now, so that's our scene completely done. If we wanted to go through and animate our objects, you know, as we would, we can go up to our transform in the inspector and set some keyframes and start animating it. And you can see here we have our cube, but Currently, it's just got some colors on it. If we select the cube 3D, we go to the material tab in the inspector, you can see that it's got the different faces, front, right, left, bottom, top, and back. And every time we select that, you can see it's a different color. So we could obviously change the bottom one if we wanted to, to go white, it's gonna change the color. What I wanna do is change it so that that's images, and that is why you are here. So what we're going to do is start dragging in images. So we're gonna drag an image in, and then drag the output of that image to the cube. Now, if you want to rename this, obviously we can. So we're going to right click, rename, and we're just going to call it Starry Sky, just so that we can kind of keep an idea of what's going on. And you see, there it is, perfect. If the image doesn't fit the cube, you're going to add a transform node in between the image and the cube 3D. So with the image selected, shift space, type in transform. And we're going to add the 2D transform. And then with that one selected, we can scale up and you'll notice that the image will scale up or down like so. Now, one thing to note is if the image is too small, then you have this transparent sort of border. So you do wanna make sure it's at least slightly big enough so that you don't get that border, but it's never gonna go over the edge. So we're gonna do that. And then we can add our next image. Now I do recommend that you transform each image as you go, purely and simply because the more images you add to the cube, the more uh, computer power it's gonna take, right? So, you know, you don't wanna add them all to the scene and then all of a sudden have to go through and somehow have to transform them all. But you can see, as I just add each one, I'm adding a transform node just so I can, can manipulate it. And we can always use the 3D space to control what we're looking at. Cool. And so now we have our cube. And if I rotate around that, you can see we have all our images lined up like so. However, you may know that they're kind, some of them are okay, but some of them are tinted. And that's because we still have the original colors in the cube set to those funky colors. So it's pretty simple. We're gonna go to the front. I'm gonna change it to white. Uh, however you wanna do that is the easiest. I just go to this one, change it to white, and we're gonna go right, and we're gonna do it again, and we're gonna go white. All right, now that you've done that, you have your photo cube ready to go, and you can literally just go through and animate it if you like. So we can just go to frame zero, I'm gonna go to transform, let's set a keyframe for all the rotation. And then we're just gonna move right to the end of our scene, give it a little bit of a spin. I'm not super fussed on what it's doing. And then that's gonna animate it throughout the scene. And if we go back to the edit tab, now we have our rotating cube, which is gonna go through and rotate through the scene. So there you go, guys. That's how you create a 3D photo cube inside DaVinci Resolve. Pretty easy. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. And like I said before, subscribe to the channel if this is the sort of content that you're interested in. And I will see you guys in the next video.